today we're reviewing another little holiday short. Uh, from the title, you may be assuming I mean a certain other Rudolph movie, a, a certain Rankin Bass one, but that's actually not what we're talking about today. No, no, that wasn't even the first one. Actually, I'm not even sure if the one I'm reviewing today is the first one, to be totally real with you. But, um, I was unaware it existed until very recently, and then seeing what production house it came from, I was like, oh, I have to find this. And then the fact that it just happened to be on Tubi, I was like, okay, so we're just watching this right now. Like, literally right now. <laughs> so, it's the version from 1948. It's the Max Fleischer version. As in the same person who did Gulliver's Travels and The Adventures of Gabby and all those other Fleischer originals that just... Oh, they have such a charm to them, and it's that art style that inspired Cuphead. It, yeah, you you know who Fleischer is. So, this one, it was interesting. Even though it's only eight minutes long, it's set to the song and obviously inspired by it and largely follows it, but it kind of takes a different twist on it. So, I mean, in most versions of Rudolph that we're familiar with, Rudolph is one of the reindeers that already lives at the North Pole, belongs to Santa, like all of the rangers just belong to him from the word go, from the time they are born. That is like what we're used to. Not so in this one. It's like a deer village. Whether or not they are technically reindeers, I'm not sure. Or if he's just a normal deer, <laughs> I'm not even sure in this one. Uh, but he's just referred to as a deer, and there's a few deer puns throughout it. Um, like, on the note that he leaves his parents, says, Dear, D-E-E-R, Mom and Dad. <laughs> um, but the animation style is so charming. I just, I love it so much. I have such a soft spot for that, like, 30s and 40s art style. I grew up watching it. No, I'm not that old to where I lived it, but I, I was surrounded by it growing up. That was a lot of stuff that I watched when I was super little, because for whatever reason, I just freaking loved it. So, and I still do. But, um... So it starts out the usual way. They're showing, like, these little reindeers that are doing their reindeer games, and they're playing around, and up pops Rudolph, and they start making fun of him for his nose. Par usual. <laughs> uh, and he goes home and sulks a bit, although his mother reminds him that, hey, th tonight's the night to hang up your stocking, and of course he's thrilled about that, so he goes and carefully hangs it up at the foot of his bed and goes to bed, but not before having a little cry over remembering what the other reindeer said to him. I was like, oh, my heart. Oh, poor Rudolph, my baby. So then they cut to Santa Claus, who's like, big, burly, strapping Santa in this with a really big, booming voice. And I was like, what the hell is happening right now? Um, you can totally tell that this is like a very, very closely recent post-war animation from about this point onwards because everything has a very Uncle Sam feel to it and a very industrial vibe from the way that the North Pole operates when Santa takes off with his sleigh to just the whole vibe of it. It's so interesting and so different from any other version of Rudolph I've ever seen. It's not in a bad way, it's just very different, very unique, and very much a sign of the times of when this was made. I was like, all right, okay, I see what you did there. <laughs> like, straight up to after Rudolph saves the day for him, he has made the commander-in-chief. Like, straight up, it is, like, very much, <laughs> like, like Uncle Sam shit. I was like, oh my god. Um, but it's so interesting because he doesn't go out of his way in the traditional way of most Rudolph stories to find him. No, he happens to be struggling to do his deliveries that Christmas Eve through all the fog, getting lost, going off course, his sleigh getting banged around and stuff, you know, the usual stuff. But um, he happens to be delivering presents to Rudolph's house anyway, and when he goes to fill Rudolph's stocking, it's when he realizes that's not a lamp that's illuminating this room. That's his nose. And he goes and gently wakes him up and asks him, he explains the predicament and asks him if he'll come help him. Because Santa Claus needs you! <laughs> I'm sorry, it's like Uncle Sam Claus in this, basically. And I kind of love it. But um, 
obviously he's very proud, and he quickly leaves a note for his parents, and he goes off and he helps Santa deliver the presents and has an easy job of it. And when they come back, oh, it's like a hero's welcome for him at the Reindeer Coliseum, which is apparently a thing, and like, freaking thousands of reindeers <laughs> filling the seats all to see their new hero, Rudolph, who has now returned to them. It's like, so, in this version, it's not even like he's an made a permanent member of Santa's sleigh. No, no, he was just a one-time thing, and now you are returned to your people, go back to your life, but you're a hero now, and a commander-in-chief. Okay. All right. <laughs> I dig it. Like I said, it's different, but it's not bad. It's just very, very 1940s. <laughs> I'm just like, all right, that's cool, I guess. It's only eight minutes of your time if you want to go watch it, and on Tubi it's free, so may as well. But, yeah, I had never seen it before, and I'm just like, definitely an interesting one. I feel like there was a little Golden Book version of Rudolph that I would have to see it again to compare, but I want to say it's very similarly styled, and the animation style in that too, or the illustration style, I should say, for the book, but... Very similar, and I have to wonder, was it inspired by this version? It might be. <laughs> like, all right, you do you. Again, not that, it's, it's almost like a refreshing breath of fresh air compared to, like, all of the cookie-cutter versions of Rudolph that we're used to. I mean, obviously, at its core, it's still going to be the same story, but seeing a unique twist on it, I love that. It's not that often we get that when something as basic as Rudolph, so bravo to you, Max Fleischer. So, anyway, I loved it. I loved it personally. And again, it's eight minutes. Go watch it. So, anyways, that's it for this one, my dude. So, as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Etsy, everything and more. It's all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Anyway, guys, until next time, see ya.